Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. Today is the long-awaited building a space station using real-world rockets. Such as, say, the Falcon 9, Starship, uh, the N1, which never made it to orbit. There could be some potentials. So I'm just loading into the game now, and the first rocket that we'll be using is the Falcon 9. It is one of the simplest rockets and one of the best rockets for space transportation since it has a reusable lower stage and has like the sweet spot for payload capabilities it's not like the do-all be-all vehicle of launch vehicles like starship will be and it doesn't cost a whole lot so that's also another thing good about it sorry if i sound a bit ill right now because i am just get it over like a cold or a flu or something I'm not sure I already built the payload in my previous attempt at launching the rocket I do not have that footage however very unfortunately so since this is the core module we don't need a, um, a target so we can just launch whatever and there's no countdown so we're just gonna take off straight away As we ascend through the atmosphere, you might see how the upper stage of the Falcon 9 wiggles around a little bit. That is because this was recorded in the Alpha, or no, 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 it was um, before the first patch of KSV 2. So all this was before the first patch, and it just took me so long to get the motivation to do the second part. challenge, which is going to Juma, and also I gotta remake my SSTO tutorial video because half the footage got corrupted when I went to export the video, and I don't have it anymore because I don't, I needed storage to record more videos, and I deleted that one, even though I have a backlog of other videos. Send it through the atmosphere, and at stage separation, I do cut to a different part of the mission. Don't worry, I didn't cheat or anything, it's just that there was a problem in the ascent. Okay. So we just cut to that point right now, and the problem that was in the ascent is that I got into orbit, and then I like detached the space station core module, and like the entire thing went interstellar. It was going the speed of light, and it was escaping the Kerbaler system. So then I just reloaded a quick save and launched again. I hope you guys enjoy this video because it took me very long, and I almost lost it because. At one point, I was down to three frames per second. Launching a rocket all the way up into orbit, and then realizing that I forgot to put a docking port on it. After I rendezvoused, the entire time I had like less than 10 FPS. That happened to me three times on this mission. And I do plan to extend the space station, maybe at some big giant fuel tanks and some, I don't know, giant solar panel arrays. So that is a future plan. So maybe there'll be another video about me like, I don't know, I can launch some, I can launch Starship up and give it like a solar array. I don't know. And so now I am using, I'm try, just trying to get extremely circularized in this orbit. But I did something that I did not realize. We're at an inclination of about 2.8 degrees, which was really annoying when I tried to um, attach others. And I, 
as you can see, I bring it down the impulse to the specific impulse of the coupler to zero. And after letting time warp take the boost to the upper stage again, away, I deorbit it. And this upper stage has way more fuel than it realistically needs to. And if you guys notice something that I did not recover the booster, yes, you would be correct. Even though I put on the landing apparatus required for landing, I didn't because every time I landed the booster, the upper stage would disappear and it would corrupt the quick save. So I couldn't. Maybe it's fixed now in the patch one, but I, I don't want to take that risk. And and also, this is already done. Yeah, this is footage I already had, so I just went ahead and used it. So we're landing the upper stage. And I forgot to do the suicide burn. So we did it a bit too late. And I'm just destroying some debris right now. Which I really should have a limiter on. But I don't. And I was just checking the flight situation to see if it was going interstellar again, and it wasn't. So I decided to use the space shuttle next time. So we got Falcon 9 and space shuttle. Man, the timeline for realistic rockets is great. We got the Falcon 9 and the space shuttle. Well, what was the difference between launching the space shuttle and the Falcon 9? Wasn't the last date for the space shuttle... Uh... No, when was the last time? It, it, no, Columbia Disaster was one of the last. I'm gonna look that up. Uh, space Shuttle last flight. Here we go. Oh, uh, I built the secondary module of the space station and I put it inside of the space shuttle. I didn't even talk about what it was. I, don't, I can't even remember. So now we're just gonna wait until we have a an opportunity to that's like a good launching window. It should be a bit further forward. And then my space shuttle collapsed. Yeah. I, I'm not sure why. And I believe I tried this like three different times, which I don't think I actually removed from the video. So you'll see me time warping. Okay, so it's time warp one. And then it just exploded. Well, it didn't explode, but the booster fell off. And then it exploded. Oh, the very last flight of the space shuttle was STS-135 on July 8th, 2011. And what about the Falcon 9 lot or first flight? Falcon 9. Not Falcon 8. Or Falcon 0. 9. First flight. Oh, June 2010. Okay. So there was a possibility to launch a Falcon 9. 1.0 uh, for one year almost exactly. Oh, and here's the countdown for the space shuttle. Space shuttle is one of my favorite rockets. It just looks really cool having the orbiter slung to the side. It's unfortunate that it it's un. Soyuz test, which never actually made it, and then I believe I was say 1976. Right? Oh, I gotta look that up. Fish on the first flight. Oh no, 1981. people. 
Festival. So yeah, 1981 to June 2010. 40, or not 40, 30 years NASA had to approve the space shuttle. But they kept the same, the same design and the same parts every time. It seems like as the decades went on, the worse and worse space shuttles got, even if it was like the same exact hardware. So I am not sure Columbia. Uh, so, maybe. I don't know. And as you can see, it's like an almost perfectly equatorial, and I have like a 2.8 inclination, which really bugged me. So, wait, hold on. Is Was this before the first badge or after? Because I saw the little um, lock icon, so you can lock it. Maybe this was after the first badge. guys are enjoying, like and subscribe, helps me a lot. I think I'm at like, what, 63 subscribers? I gained like, five from, since the last video. You guys are like, real kind, and thank you. I know it's like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna like and subscribe, because, you know, I don't want to give this man my money. You're not giving me money or anything. I, in fact, I can't even get money from YouTube. Um, it just helps me out a lot in viewer engagement. So we just dropped the big orange fuel tank. Oh, we were going in an orbital trajectory when we had that. And we're using the nuclear engines. However, I forgot to... I forgot that since my month space shuttle landing, I was like, if this thing can make it to the mud, it can rendezvous in orbit, right? So, I was using the nuclear engines, and I realized that I was burning through a lot more liquid hydrogen than I should have, because I had well more than enough to get to the mud. I should have had enough to, you know, rendezvous in orbit. However, I put an extra, I put one of the, F the medium hydrogen fuel tanks in the cargo bay of the space shuttle. So I was unable to actually do that, so, whoopsies. <clears throat> in hindsight, I probably should have just, like, you know, put more fuel in the orange fuel tank, or lift some more hydrogen fuel tanks in because realistically if that entire cargo bay was full of liquid hydrogen it would be much fuller than a cargo bay with empty space and then some liquid hydrogen and also if we go like over the total amount if like it was at one bar of pressure exactly that's not the case you could over pressurize it more liquid hydrogen in there, which is more delta B, which means you can go further. So, just saying. Highly pressurize your tanks, kids. It's way more efficient. Yep, I'm highly pressurized. Well, that's also the, the thoughts for propane tanks, because it's normally, it wants to be a gas, but it's just like freezed down to a liquid inside of a propane canister just because it's so dense. The denser something is, the hotter it is, but also the lower the states of matter it is. So you could have like liquid hydrogen at a thousand bar and it's like extremely hot coming in contact with other hydrogen. But since it's like, say in a propane tank that was like, could withstand, withstand a thousand bar it has no leaks for liquid hydrogen. It can stay a liquid, even at like those absurd temperatures, um, smashing into other hydrogen atoms or hydrogen molecules because it's LH2, not LH. Man, maybe doing a commentary stream 
is not a good idea. Just trying to get our intersect points closer and closer together. And at this point I start worrying, oh, I run out of fuel, oh, I'm gonna have to turn on infinite fuel to make this. Will I have to? Keep watching to find out. Oh, that's where Bill Kerman went. Okay. Gotcha. What? So we're just getting closer, and unfortunately we're rendezvousing in the dark side of the planet, so it's much harder for me and you to see. I don't know how it's gonna look on YouTube, but I'm... Yeah, I, I can see the space shuttle. I, I can still see it. Just dark, darkened. You know, maybe I, uh, well, I can't, I can't change it now. I'd have to pause the commentary and make it better. <sighs> well, gosh darn it. I guess. I'll just have to, you know, pause it. I've made the decision not to because when we orbit, we'll be on the light side of the planet. Oh, you just saw me opening up cheat menu. Yes, unfortunately, I did have to. I might have been able to do it without refilling the tanks, but I would have had to start the retrograde burn, or at least relative to our target, much sooner. And if I didn't, then we would zip by our target and I'd keep going down and I'd like get super far away from the target before like it makes a difference. So we burn towards the target and we're getting our intercept nodes pretty close, pretty close I'd say. Oh. We're just burning cat close, closer and closer, and I'm gonna point retrograde just to be prepared. You might be able to see Bill Kerman in there, but we're approaching our target. We're gonna fire up the nuclear engines as soon as we're closer to the target as possible, and also some bursts of the vector engines. Slow down to zero orbit to the light side of the planet and you can see the sun peeking over Kerbin or Kerbal peeking over Kerbin now we're just burning towards the target and now we're just gonna face retrogrades so we can prepare for the rendezvous and docking Originally, I did want to have the payload still in the space station when we docked, but the approach that we had to the space station was less than desirable, as you can see. So I decided, you know what, let's just let the payload go and it can dock. And this is the part where I thought it would be all fun and games and it'd be easy and I could get this video done relatively fast do it in one day, be really easy, get lots of views, because it's what the community wants to see. Oh boy was I wrong. Oh, oh boy I was wrong. So, what to decouple, and, and then it freaks out, and if I time warp, I'm gonna time warp into the space shuttle, and then it's gonna explode, so I have to wiggle my way out. However, I made this exactly the size of cargo bay, so it's very, very hard to move out of the way. So I kind of like just got to scoot myself at an angle and pull myself out. Well, like at a certain angle because something gets caught on there. Because like you, you can see right now. Uh -huh. I think it's one of the junior. Oh, yep. That that's where I time warp and the entire thing blows up. Including the core module of the space station, which was like 
not even in the blast zone. It was just relatively nearby. So we're setting the targets again and setting the control points. We're going over. It's a coupling. And we're gonna control from there. Face towards the target. Right? Okay, cool. And then part of the wing breaks off, which is the saving grace, because that flings the other module out. And I forgot that the space state or er, the, the space shuttle blew up. Not quite sure why, but it did. So I'm just trying to get maneuvered closer to the target, and I'm pretty sure Kerbal Space Program 2 needs to fix their maneuvering with relative target, because as you can see, I'm like barely moving at all, but I seem to be moving in a different direction much, much, much faster than I am. I'm slipping on my own words, I'm talking so fast, I'm gonna be the next Eminem. Am I gonna get copyright claimed for that? Not likely. If so, what are they gonna do? I have like 60 subs, or 62 subs, sorry. I'm just trying to get lined up and stay alive. And it's, I don't know if it's working out or not because I know I try it for so long and I wasn't happy with the orientation but I was, but it took me so long, I was just like, you know what, forget about it. Orientation is fine. No one's gonna look at it and be like, ew, that sucks, it's disgusting. I hate this guy. No. No. We're halfway through the video, guys. So, if you guys wanna pause, grab a cup of water, maybe hit the like button, you know, we're good, yeah. Know, maybe grab a meal, open up DoorDash, or Uber Eats, go order like some Taco Bell or Burger King or something. I, I, I don't know, guys. I, I don't really know what to talk about. I'm just trying to like think of stuff on the fly, and now I'm talking about what I don't know what to talk about because that's really how desperate I am for things to talk about. Now, it says 21 meters apart, but it definitely does not look like 20 or 19 meters apart. It looks maybe like, six, like no, not 60. Maybe 60 feet, but not 60 meters. I'm just thinking more like 25 meters. <sighs> On the core module, you can see we have RCS tanks liquid hydrogen tanks, docking ports, and cupola modules. And this has a fuel tank, more RCS. And this is when I don't... So this module right here that I'm controlling right now spins and starts accelerating in whatever direction it wants once I unfocus it. So I have to like pause the game move to the other vessel, make my change, and then go back. Otherwise, it just freaks out, and even when I do that, it still does it. As you can see, I froze the game right there, and it's super close now, so I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, finally, yes. And then that module starts tipping over. Why? This game is broken I'm just trying to talk to, not talk two vessels together dock them together and they're not even going to like stay facing each other it's so dumb like what I really don't understand What made it even worse is that this had offset RCS, so it went the center of thrust was in the center. And RCS, I don't think throttles to account for that. It just like fires all the thrusters, and since, you know, that's probably might work. Let's 
so I'm just trying my best right now to get them docked together. And I end up getting it closer, but still further than it was earlier. I'm basically back to square one. Just trying to dock again, and those two docking ports are so close together, I I just can't believe it. It's just dock. It's right there. It's right there. And then I time warp to stop all rotation, and then I just turn off SAS because that does not want to work. And they finally dock. At this point, I'm running at three FPS, so. You can imagine I'm not too happy about the situation. And any second now, yep, uh, okay, we're in the Saturn V launch. Yeah. This is the last module of the space station before we send up crew and a mystery rocket. Ooh, I wonder what that's gonna be. It's not gonna be Boeing Starliner, I'll tell you that. I tried so hard to make it Boeing Starliner. But it wouldn't. I the RD one eighty engine does not there is no counterpart, so I took like two mainsail engines and I tried like putting those next to each other on a large fuel tank to like mimic a RD one eighty. And I would use the poodle, except it looks nothing like it, and also it's also a vacuum engine. So here I decided, you know what, I'm gonna add a little satellite that the space station can deploy and like bring back if it wants to. Okay, good job. Okay, where is it gonna be controlled from? Answer, I forgot. There is no control unit on the satellite, so it's just dead weight. So I can, you know, eject it after like the satellite and stuff, is, or the antenna or the antenna is out but it can't do anything because there's no probe core to relay any data so I'm kind of upset about that because I was in orbit I was like okay time to deploy it right I forgot um, and then also like a bunch of other stuff happened not a bunch of other stuff, but something else happens when I try to do that. And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make this the um, propulsion, propulsion stage as well as crew habitation stage. So I put like, what, a terrier engine up there? I don't think I've done that yet. And I almost launched the rocket without having any docking ports on it. So. I am glad I caught myself because I would have cried and maybe and maybe like you know collapsed um, not really uh, because at this point I, I was like done uh, like I didn't I really did not want to do this mission but I did it for you guys and I had fun so I'm putting down a senior docking port because uh because you know, I wanted it to be in line with the rocket. Um, however, I did not put a probe core on any of that stage. None. It is uncontrollable once you uh, once you separate it. So it's like you have to dock it and then separate the vacuum stage, which. No, it wasn't the J2. The J10. No, the J2 engines were the second stage, not the third. Um, what was the third stage? Man, what? I cannot remember. Because the F1s and then the J, the 5J. Oh, yeah. I just remembered something. I only have four J2 engines in my Saturn V. Not five. That's something I need to fix. Because the Saturn V had five J2 engines. Man, I'm getting really congested. In, in total, I think I spent like three hours of gameplay making this video. Because there's like four, 
there's six sections of this video that I have, and three of them are at 200 times speed. Or not 200 times speed, that'd be so fast. 200% speed, and everything else is 150% speed, so. And also, I forgot to put the little winglets on the bottom of my Saturn V again, so it flipped out like it did last time. And I forgot to wait till a, um, what are those called? Like, an intercept window? No, uh, I don't know. But it, there's like, they are re really helpful. With the crew, I got like a perfect one. Before I even got into orbit, I was, I was like a thousand meter separation. stage really I cannot spell I'm just getting my ascending node lined up this I recorded today the date of recording I believe it's what the 24th uh, the Saturn f the s4b was the upper stage okay what engine was it S1, the S4B on the was third zero or third one. Okay, and one J2 rocket engine. Wait, hold on, what was the second stage then? That was the S2. The four J2 engines. No, five, five. Yeah, five J2. Yeah, NASA really loved J2 engines back then. Single Saturn V had six. There was a plan to make the lower stage. I believe there was a. S no, there wasn't, but I believe there was a plan to make it hydrogen lower stage too. Which made it would have made it even more efficient. Hydrogen is actually like a great fuel. Except for, you know, it's not dense and it's also, you know. It has to be really cold, boils off really quickly. Methane is kind of like an in-between of Carolox, Hypergolics, and Hydrogen. Hypergolics are great because you don't really need to like, you know, worry about startup of any engines or like igniters or anything. You just shoot the propellants together and it goes So. I mean, that, I guess that's cool. So I'm just trying to get our intercepts really close. And it's bouncing around, so I'm just using the RCS for a very fine control. Get it as close as possible. So what now? Five minutes into the video, um, I believe the video ends at forty, no, fifty-four. Right, that's fifteen minute intervals. Yeah. That, okay. Yes. Right, just to make sure. Oh, 
I'll find it, Daddy. So how you been, guys? What are you doing in math? That was math class, guys. Anything new and cool and it's, it's exciting in science? Oh yeah, I, yeah, I did that last week. Mhm. Mm yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh huh. That's really cool, guys. It's good to know. Oh, uh, quick question. Uh, how's language arts? You pass in that class? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have an A in that class, actually. Um. So. Is there anyone? <laughs> nah. I'm stop at fake conversation before I like I don't know ask hey buddy I was a 10 long time no see or something like that I don't know I am getting extremely bored. How does Matt do this? Like, Matt Loud. I'm just, that guy is, like, insane. I need to, like, search up interesting topics to talk about for one person. It's a one-way conversation we're having. I'm talking, you're consuming the content, and you guys are enjoying it, liking the video, and giving it a thumbs up. Hey, hey, I did it again. Getting that likes and subscribers up always a good thing sorry you know guys hit the like button if I'm doing it too often and subscribe if I'm doing if I'm not doing it enough that really shows me and also like leave a comment telling me your favorite candy or something I really like Milky Way bars like Milky Way bars they're like the top dog. That's what Milky Way bars are the top dog. Like people need to respect them more. Like honestly. And they even have like a funny name for the stuff on the inside. Nougat. <laughs> like honestly. It's like so cool. Oh, uh so our rendezvous is right there. There's the space station. I have the game paused. Selecting, selecting the docking port. <gasps> oh man, I just yawned. Let me know if you guys yawn too. And so, am I gonna do anything? Or am I just gonna, like, you know, do nothing? <laughs> no, I'm doing something. I don't know what though. And we were cutting it a bit close with the Delta B budget we had. We only have 227 meters per second left. Granted, that is enough to, you know, deorbit. It's also enough to... No, you... T my brain went, oh, you can make it to the MUN with that, del with that amount of fuel. No. You can't. Maybe if you live in, like, I don't know, Norway or something. Right? I'm pretty sure Norway's population is zero. Let me check. Norway population. Oh. Uh, 5.408 million. You know what, guys? If you guys are from Norway, leave a, leave a comment in the... Leave a comment. Mm -hmm. Not a comment. I, I don't want a comment. You could keep those, but leave a comment and like and subscribe. <sighs> so I undocked because I did not like the orientation and I'm now trying to change the or orientation to make it better. Yeah, and stuff. So, just bringing it closer, and it definitely looks like the Rhino engine is supposed to be like a J2 upper stage, right? Like, yeah. And it's 
says that it just got destroyed, but it didn't. Okay, maybe now without the space station, 540 meters per second, you might be able to make an intercept with the Mun, but not get an orbit, not land, not return. I mean, unless you give yourself a great return trajectory, but that solely depends on where you are in your orbit, what the Mun's orbit is, and a bunch of other technical stuff. And also, at what direction you burn. If you burn retrograde, you're not going to the Mun. That's a that's a quick little fact. If you point, if you look down and then jump, you're going up. But if you, but if your entire body is facing down and then you jump, you're going down, not up. That's pretty crazy, guys, right? It's just ties of physics. He sent a Kerbal on a quick little EVA to inspect all the stuff, and now we're going to the VAB. And there's the Boeing Starliner, which I really will never work on ever again. Because it's dumb. And also the like the way it goes from like going large to medium and then going large again. It seems unnecessary. Just keep it large the entire time. You get more dealt well. It's also relying on the lower stage's ability to an already an already 180. Doesn't have that great of thrust. It still is like a pretty beefy engine. Don't get me wrong. It's like an amazing engine. But the RD 180 isn't like the be all end all of engines. That's more like the Raptor engine. Now I'm just trying to like match up SLS's. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention that we're making SLS as the um, crew vehicle and so we have that like eight engine or not eight engine like nine engine upper upper stage I don't know why I needed to say upper upper stage I could just say upper stage and I could just say like lower upper stage but then that'd be like Hey guys, I got my new lower upper stage today. You guys like it? Um, so now I'm just moving it, uh, moving it up, going play. It's going up in the world, guys. It's going up in the world. <laughs> You're so funny. This guy's hilarious, guys. I know. Thank you. Thank you. And I tried to put in some girder pieces, but because the interim cryogenic propulsion stage has like those beams going to the bell, but I figured it's unnecessary, it's extra weight, it's complex, the engine by itself will perform it like it as it needs. Now I'm just adding some, you know, colors. I. How did I forget the word colors? I, you guys, you know, I need help. You guys need to pay me on my GoFundMe. Uh, $10,000 is the minimum fee. We get 10 donations in the first three hours. I'll do a bicep reveal. Yeah, well, no, not a bicep reveal. Those, no, that's, how about a leg hair reveal? Yeah, everybody's going to go crazy for a leg hair reveal. Uh, if this video gets ten thousand dollars in the first ten, in the first hour, I'll do a leg hair reveal. I'll shave my legs put it in a plastic ziploc bag and I'll take a picture of it if we get a hundred donations remember the minimum donation is ten thousand dollars in the first ten hours then I'll mail it to a random subscriber I know everybody's gonna be like what I want one of those I know I know you guys gotta settle down man how did I get on the track for talking about leg hair reveals and selling it 
because I need dono I need donations. And I blabbered my entire way through of making SLS. Wow. I can't believe myself. It does look pretty good though. Uh, I do like the way it looks. It looks pretty faithful. At first, the uh, orange fuel tank was too short, but adding just one more of those segments. Build it right up. So the space station will have a maximum of four crew on board at a time, because, you know, in-flight crazy situations don't, ex don't exactly happen in KSP-2. Or KSP-1. I mean, unless you have mods. That, then that's like, you know, a possibility that you could have like an engine failure. I'm pretty sure you can have engine failures in KSP2. Like, eventually they're gonna add it because it's nominal at like certain thrusts. So maybe like they'll add the more times you ignite an engine, but it'll be like, you ignite it once, it's like, okay, it ignites or it doesn't, besides if it's broken. If you ignite it like a hundred times, it's gonna be like, Nominal, so it's still working. But instead of like, let's say 100 kilobits, it's now running at like, I don't know, 56.7 kilobits. So now we're just waiting for the Clydesdale boosters to run out. stage still attached by you so it lands on the core stage then gets back up into orbit then it's probably with the core stage and run out of fuel make it to midness land on the interim crash and propulsion stage get back into midness orbit on that stage get into mun orbit ditching the interim crash and propulsion stage and then the orion stage or the european service module stage sorry and then probably return to Kerbin. So yeah, I could go a Kerbin Mun la Mun Mun landing, Mun Minmus Minmus landing, back to Minmus orbit, Mun, and then Kerbin. Yeah, that's probably how much it can do because we have like two thousand. I believe it's two thousand and two thousand two hundred. When we got up to our target. So yeah, we have like an absurd amount of fuel. Just stitching the uh, launch escape system down. Just trying to get our intercepts as close as possible. Now I'm really, really struggling to talk, to find out what to talk about. Look at those glasses on the Kerbals, guys. Don't they look pretty neat? I mean, come on. Kerbals with glasses. What else is better? What else could you possibly ask for? I mean, these Kerbinauts need, or they have, yep, they need impaired eyesight. So they also need glasses, therefore. So it just makes sense to, you know, purposely damage their eyeballs so they need to buy fancy eyewear. You know, maybe they were at the they were at the optometrist and they're like, oh, you have an excellent vision. And they just like, let me fix that for you. And then like, give them black eye or something. Now they like, can't see correctly. Yellow looks like black and green looks like magenta or something. And like everything looks like it's 30 feet or 30 meters to the left. So everything is super close. All the, f all the, or all the far away objects look super close. Super close objects look super far away. Kerbals are like constantly tripping, on like you know sidewalks and stuff. Yeah, that's probably what happens. 
you know, I, now I'm not a doctor, right? However, I do know a doctor, right? And that's the doctor at Ohio State doctor's office, clinical checkup and stuff. Dot incorporated. Yes, it is an actual place. Look it up. Uh, okay, let's do a Q&A. What's my favorite place to eat? Uh, Shrek's Pizza has to be 10 out of 10. Great service, great food. I have been very disappointed ever since they closed. Um, really hope they open again. They have, one of the they have like the most extensive menus ever. You can never find anything else anywhere, trust me. Um... What's my favorite? Spacecraft. You know, I don't think Star it's, uh, Starship is like, yeah, that's like one of everybody's favorites. Mine is Space Shuttle. But I think Starship is like, if you take 99.999, like the, if you take Elon Musk's hypothetical combustion efficiency, which is like 98, 99%. And it like is as if God came down and knitted the individual molecules together. That's like how close of a second place Starship is to um, Space Shuttle for me. What color pants am I wearing right now? Red. Just kidding. I'm wearing black jeans. Just kidding. I don't know where I'm wearing. I don't know what I'm wearing. Am I? No. Nope. I'm wearing a plaid. I'm wearing plaid sweatpants right now. I am also wearing the brightest blue jeans ever. Um, I'm wearing a yellow and green and hot pink t-shirt um, with the brightest orange shoes with amazing pink highlights okay we're here uh, we're at the space station we're coming up on our approach and we're gonna dock pretty soon to get the crew on board cool we now have four people in service at the at the Vortex Aerospace Space Station owned by the Sweater Dog YouTube channel. Yippee. Alright, so uh, like, subscribe, smash the bell, check out some other videos. There's some on screen right now. Um, there's Kermit. Okay, what else to talk about? The video's about to end. There's a cool cinematic I found on the internet. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>